You know, we don't need to go too far from here to understand or to get an example of what the beauty of ingenuity means. I usually prepare as an artist, as a performer, I usually prepare, I always prepare. I think for anybody, it is the most important thing is to be prepared in life. But you know what? For this talk, when it came along my way three days ago, I sat back with a pen and a paper, opened the nib of the pen, opened the pen, was about to write it down, and something inside me said, don't, don't write it. Don't plan this one. Let it just happen. Take what comes from there, give what you need to at that moment. So absolutely unprepared about this speech and I'm feeling so much more free. I'm feeling free about the fact that I don't have to limit myself to a structure or to certain points or to a thought that I will carry. No, I can wander anywhere. I'm not limiting myself, I'm breaking that barrier, you know. And I think that is what is the magic of today. That is what is, is really what is required for all of us to excel. Uh, you know, just breaking the barrier, but staying sane. <laughs> you know, I, I can't be talking about something else that I'm not supposed to be. But, but it just gives me a lot of freedom to be able to talk like this. So, the best example of the beauty of ingenuity is this place that we are here right now. I was just having a talk with uh, uh, Samantha Sara just a little while ago, and I heard that story. And that's when I said, wait, I don't need to go too far to talk to you guys. I found my story right here, and the story exists in this place. This is a, an amazing example of the beauty of ingenuity. For what has been created, for what the gentleman and his team has made, we don't need to go far to understand what is ingenuity, how do we get it. No, it just talk to the man, spend 15, 20 minutes of your life with him, and you will get all your answers to understand how beautiful this word ingenuity is, how powerful, how it's, in the last 15 minutes, it became one of the most important words of my life. And you know what? At 45, I'm saying that this word has become the most important word in my life, crazy. So, standing here, uh, you know, people say, where were you for so long? You know, how come we've just seen you in like, uh, four or five interesting projects because I say I have a story that I come along with. I'm one of those guys who took a decision at 36 to release myself from the corporate rooms and to head out into the field of theater. And even that was my calling. But even this is my calling. And I'm so happy that I did that. So 36 decided. Uh, okay, what am I doing? I'm doing great. So what was I doing before that? I was a corporate trainer. I used to train people on personal development, motivation, communication, customer service, and the whole shebang that you can think of. But before that also comes in a lot of stories. I don't think you're here to hear that story. We'll leave the story for another time. But at 36, just sitting there in BKC, in my room, and I'm saying, all right, it's going great. I'm doing great. I'm training people. I'm not training people. I'm sharing knowledge. I'm, I'm, I'm just sharing tools that I've learned on my way with people that will help them take their step forward. That's great. But am I liking this whole nine to five where my life is so stark, the numbers that I have to meet, it's going crazy, the stress life is going off? And I said, no, that's not what I want. And you will not believe it. The minute I said to myself that this is not what I want, the phone rang and I picked up the phone and my friend said, hi, uh, listen, are you in Calcutta? I said, why? He's like, no, I'm casting for a film uh, and the director wants something like you, you know, salt and pepper. He wants something like your look. So will you be willing to come over and, you know, just, just, just give an audition? And I said, yes, of course, I'll do. And I went there and I just gave that audition, got selected. The shoot was the next day. It was December the 23rd, 2013. Uh, 2013, and I gave that shot, the first shot of my life ever, not knowing what I was doing there. I don't know what was the spark in me which said that let's do it. And then after giving the first shot, I realized how, wow, this is interesting. 
This is interesting because this is not me, this is somebody else. I didn't understand it quite then, but I just found it interesting. There were a lot of other things there that made it interesting. You know, like creative minds. Creative minds, that's what it made it interesting to me. Uh, and a creative mind is very different from a, uh, you know, a, a mind that just wants to do business. Of course, that's also creating. But a creative, if you're creating uh, drama, if you're creating art, if you're creating uh, theater, it's a different mind. And I kind of enjoyed that mind space. And I enjoyed that mind space. And then while I was on that set, shooting for that film for two days, it was just a two scene thing. And I had to come back to Bombay and continue with my training because I had uh, workshops lined up. And I get another call from that same art director who was working in this film from another film saying, uh, well, there's a new guy in town. Would you like to check him out? And the director said, hey, I'd like to meet you. And I met him, and the next day, I had another film lined up. I don't know what it was. It was just destiny, or it was just my good karmas, or it was just the seeds that I had sown that were, that were rewarding me. I'd like to look at it as the seeds that I had sown. You know, the seeds that I had sown, those were reaping out. And then the journey just became unstoppable. It just became unstoppable, and then I finished Three, uh, you know, in three years in Calcutta, I finished 25 films. Then I got an Nescafe ad, which is a great story. Uh, got that ad. Once that ad came over, uh, ad was done, great ad. The ad came out after a wait of six months. And nationally, there was a new face there. And then one of the greatest directors called Mr. Pradeep Sarkar, he called me for his film Helicopter Ila. And we, he cast me uh, opposite Kajol for that film. And we did the film, and it was an amazing film. And he said, you have to wait for six months for it to happen and release. And six months, and I'm all ready and waiting for my first Bollywood release to happen opposite Kajol. My god, can you believe it? Paying a love interest? Whoa! Who could have thought of that? Yeah, and I'm waiting for that to happen, and I'm waiting for that to happen. And and there's the media, which is like, okay, you've done a Bollywood film, tell us more about it. And I'm out on the media. Yes, it's releasing on this and this date. And just seven days before the release, I get a call from the producer saying, hi, sir, if you don't mind, we have a bad news for you. We've had to chop off your entire track with Kajol. Your 20 minutes track, your Bollywood debut has been chopped off because, producers call, because uh, they thought that it was not adding to the character of Kajol. But my first question was, sir, is it because of performance? Did I do bad that you, they said, no, 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 because I knew that the director was so amazing, Pradeep Sarkar, who's a national award winning director. He told me you were great, but the film required that. The film required that. So amidst all these, that was the first biggest hit of my life that I have had. You know, you're seven days into the release of your film and they call you and say your part's been chopped off. Uh, what happens to you? You're devastated. You're devastated and then there's a silence around and you don't want to hear anything because you just don't want to hear anything because you can't hear anything because life's left you in a situation where you just can't hear anything. But that's the point when you communicate with yourself and say, what do you want to do? And I communicated in my life and I actually read up a lot of articles on people who are bigger stars now, who are, who, who are, who are bigger performers. Uh, sorry, stars, not the word that I like. I like performer. Who are bigger performers. And I went back to see and I said, let me look at their failures. So I looked at Irfan Khan's failure. I looked at, uh, you know, Nawazuddin Siddiqui's failure. And I looked at so many other failures. And I just studied and I said, whoa, what have these guys gone through and what am I cribbing about? I'm cribbing over one film? No. It's gone, it's gone. I'd like to believe that whatever happens, happens for the good. In life, if you're writing your script, believe me, there's someone else who's writing a better script than you do. And at the end of the day, that script and your script is going to match. No matter what you do, that script and this script is going to match. So always leave that little trust to destiny, to the universe. Because you know, that Extra is going to be added by that. Leave that. Believe in the destiny is what I like you to do really. You know, understand manifestations. These are things that are manifested. That doing that, Sher Shah happened. Whoa! Sher Shah is, is an experience in every form.
is an experience. It's a privilege. It's an honor to play, you know, the character of YK Joshi Sir on screen. I think that will be the moment that I will stay forever. And when I met him, ah, you know, you just got to learn so much from people like these, like Sri Achyuta, Samantha. I just met him 15 minutes ago. I'm still carrying his energy. You will not believe it. It's like he just came in and infused a dose of his energy into me and he said, Jao beta, kill it today, kill it. At that time, you could get a job when you were 12th pass as well. If you had a 12th degree, you could get a job at that time. So I was lucky, got the job, GE Capital, GE Capital International Services call center. Thank you for calling, Ethan's. My name is Deborah, and how may I assist you today? From that, yo, ho, ho, eight hours, huh? Thank you for calling, Ethan. My name is Ethan. How may I help you today? Yeah, ma'am, I definitely do that for you. Yeah, yeah, ma'am, yeah. Okay, yeah, we did that. I did that. Started that. But before that, I couldn't even talk properly. I didn't have the confidence. I didn't have anything. I was a drifter. I don't know where the hell I was going. But then, as I said, there's a plan that's always being made for you. There's a plan that's always being made for you. And then I was 19, joined Jekis, G Capital International Services, had to undergo training, never applied a computer in my whole life before. You know, didn't know anything about it. But I think one thing I knew was what? To treat people like people. Not only to treat people like people, but to treat people like God. You know, I don't believe in God. I believe in people being God. I believe in people being God. And I can just say one thing that anyone that I encounter in my life, however big or small, I like to leave that impression behind. You know, and it's, it's very simple to do that. So I think I did that. I had that people thing. You know, I think I had that energy. So and then came in the desire to learn because I said I need this job. I have to support my family. Uh, you know, I need it. And then learn and learn and learn. We started doing voice and accent training sessions. Ta 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 ta. To pehle main thay aise baat karta tha. I didn't know how to talk. No, I like that. But after all those sessions, all those training sessions. It just started opening up customer service, understanding customer service, understanding people relationship, understanding the value of learning, the value of learning and what it can bring to your life. You know, I might not have been great as a mathematician. Uh, I might not have been great uh, in Hindi as a language, but I was getting better and better with life skills that were coming my way in every form. Young leaders developmental program, Train the trainer certification, voice and accent, customer service, you know, just going crazy, Six Sigma, understanding all of that. And I was just in that world and I said, wow, I've become a different person from what I was five years ago. And that is something that motivated me and say, if I can become a different person from what I was five years ago, then I must be a different person from what I am five years from now. And I think that is progression according to my, val my value system. I was becoming successful. Success for me is what? Success for me is not a bank account or your social status. Success for me is setting goals for yourself and achieving them. That is success also. Even if you decide to set a goal and say, I'm going to go to the gym today, or I'm going to do 10 Surya Namaskars today, and if you do it, you're successful, yes or no? And every small success like this just keeps on adding, 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 adding. And good discipline, good values, good understanding, a whole lot of knowledge. Meeting people who introduced me to jazz. Meeting friends who introduced me to world cinema. You know, meeting a godmother who introduced me to good food. Meeting someone who introduced me to great uh, philosophers and guides like Jim Rohn, Anthony Robbins, meeting those people, encountering those people, you know, someone introducing me to the autobiography of a yogi, Paramahansa Yogananda, someone introducing, it just kept happening. And I just realized that, whoa, this is amazing. Am I a magnet? Am I, what is this? It's universally sent. And this is only knowledge that was coming my way. This is life lessons that were coming my way, helping me create, become what I am today. I promise you, if I was an actor 15 years ago, I would have been the worst individual as an actor in my entire life. Because only when the student is ready, 
the teacher will appear. Remember that. We say we don't find it, we don't find it. But only when your student is ready, the teacher will appear. And the teacher can appear at any time. My biggest teacher appeared to me when I was in bed with an accident, broken tibia from 27 to 31. Four years of your life in bed, why? Had an accident, broke my tibia, took two years to heal, took three surgeries because callus formation was low. That healed after two years, went on a holiday, and because this leg was weak, I broke my femur, immediately one month, another eight months in bed. On that note, I think I've uh, spoken a lot. I'm not aware of the time. Are we already done with 15 minutes, whatever? That is, but I just hope that today's interaction means something to you. And it's not about uh, A, someone coming and talking to you. It's just about a normal bloke who's experienced a little in life, who's going to experience a lot more in life. He's just here to share it with you. And I really hope that even you guys acquire so much of experience, experience life so much, that tomorrow even you're able to share your experiences with people. You know, I had nobody who inspired me, believe me. I had nobody who inspired me, because such was my world. But I hoped that I could inspire someone some way, in some form. So that's my quest. And I think I've, I've been successful in doing that, not only standing here and talking, but in every interaction in life. As I said, I like to look at every human being as God, and when I interact with them, I'd like to talk to them as I was talking to God. Thank you so much.